What is up, YouTube? Clickwood here, back again with another episode of my budget series here on Madden 15 Ultimate Team. And today, guys, what we're going to be taking a look at is one of the most important positions, in my personal opinion, and that is middle linebacker. Now, of course, there are defenses that utilize two middle linebackers or inside linebackers, and that's your standard 34 defense, and your standard 43 defense utilizes one middle linebacker. So, of course, you kind of want to take a look at this and determine, you know, what's important for your style of defense. Do you take your players and you user control them at middle linebacker? Do you let the computer do it? Do you like to have them be good in run support? Or are you more worried about them being in pass coverage? We're going to go over those things today and I'll give you guys some players who I think are very underpriced and we'll compare them to some guys who might be a little bit overpriced. Now, of course, I'm not going to tell you that the players on the left side of your screen, which are going to be your cheaper players, are better than the players on the right side of the screen who are going to be more expensive, but we'll talk about why I think they might be more worth their price in coins, I guess is what we'll say. Now, if you're interested in any other positions, I have done budget series episodes on most of the other positions at this point. So go back and take a look at the playlist that is going to pop up on your screen here. Or, of course, you can always click in the description of the video and that will bring you to the playlist that contains most of the other positions that I've already done. So go ahead and check that out. Uh, be sure to look those over and they'll kind of explain some of the other positions that you might be looking for. So with that being said, guys, let's hop in and take a look at the middle linebacker position. The first cards that we're going to be taking a look at today are on the left hand side of your screen, we have gold. Daryl Smith, and this is the team of the week from the wild card week of the playoffs. Now, the price on this one will fluctuate a little bit. So, you know, it could be a little bit more than 6,500. It could be a little bit less than 6,500, depending on when you're looking at it. But what I will tell you is that this card probably won't skyrocket a lot in price. So it st should still remain relatively affordable for most people uh, for at least the foreseeable future as of this video being made, which is January 18th. Now, what we're going to be comparing him to is the 90 overall Sean Lee. This is a Madden 25 throwback item from the Team of the Week Week 4 set. And guys, this one is going for about 90,000 coins. So if you're interested in checking out any of the stats on these, of course, you can go over to Mudhead and, and take a look at those. EA Sports has some information on them as well. But what I have listed here are what I believe are the most important attributes for middle linebackers. And there are a lot of them. And I'm not trying to say that any of them are more important than others. It, it just it, it entirely depends on how you like to play this game, how you play with your players, and the type of plays that you run. But what I'm going to explain to you guys here is uh, the information regarding the position, or the attributes that I think are most important for this position, which are speed, acceleration, strength, awareness, play recognition, catching, man coverage, zone coverage, tackling, hit power, power move, finesse move, block shedding, and pursuit. Now, yes, I did include power move and finesse move, which are pass rushing attributes, but Really what we want to do is uh, for the middle linebacker position, we're going to more focus on run stopping and pass coverage than we are going to worry about the power move and finesse move. But I included those because I know that a lot of people like to blitz on occasion with their middle linebackers. So there you go. But anyways, uh, this first set of items here that we're taking a look at are your run stuffers. These are guys who are very, very good at stopping the opposing team's running game. And kind of the attributes that I like to look at for those are speed, acceleration, strength, and then of course if you're not using them, you want awareness and play recognition to be decently high. Of course, tackling is important as well. Hit power can be important if you're trying to force fumbles, and then of course block shedding and pursuit can be important as well. So, as you guys can see here, you've got a lot of the attributes that are relatively close to one another with these two items. Your speed and your acceleration are exactly identical. 86 speed, 88 acceleration, so they're going to run at the same speed. The awareness is also identical at an 89. So I thought that was a little bit interesting because usually your higher overall players are going to have higher uh, awareness, but that's not the case in this particular situation. Now, their play recognition is a little bit different. Sean Lee is a little bit higher at a 94, but Daryl Smith kind of makes up for that a little bit because he does have an 83 strength. So he's got a five higher attribute in that, whereas he's four lower in play recognition. Now, 
when you take a look at things like hit power, Daryl Smith is one higher, so he'll be able to force a little bit more fumbles, not a whole lot more, but they're both very, very good at tackling. Daryl Smith with a 90, and then Sean Lee with an awesome attribute at 95. That is a very, very good attribute for him. Uh, where there's the biggest difference between these two items, in my opinion, is that the block shedding for Daryl Smith is a little bit low at an 81, and his pursuit isn't quite as high as Sean Lee's being at a 96. Uh, the 96 pursuit is one of the better attributes that you're going to find in this game, really at any position. So that is a really nice attribute, and Sean Lee's going to do a great job of stopping the run because of that. Uh, he also, like I said, does have a higher block shed at an 84. So overall, you know, these items, I, I, I would have to say that Sean Lee is the better item overall because he's really only lower in um, in hit power by one and strength by five. And other than that, and all the other important attributes, he's either the same or better. But the price difference between these or the, between these two cars is huge. You see a 6,500 coin to a 90,000 coin difference. Now, of course, Sean Lee's price fluctuates a lot from console to console. So you'll have to check out and see what he's actually going for your, on, on your console. But the lowest that I've ever seen him at is at like 73, 74, 75,000, somewhere in that range um, on PlayStation 4. I've actually seen him go up as high as 100,000 at times as well. So, I mean, this is an expensive card. And it makes sense because it's a throwback card, but in my opinion, if you're comparing apples to apples here between these two cards, I mean, the, for the price, Daryl Smith is a lot better. I mean, that's just the way that it is. It's a 6,500 coin card, and uh, for that 6,500 coins, you're getting a lot. Whereas with Sean Lee, you have to spend another 80. 85,000 coins and you're not getting that much of an upgrade between the two in my personal opinion. So with that being said guys, uh, those are like I said the main attribute differences. There's also the big difference of catching here between these two but we're not going to really worry about that because these two were kind of focused on their uh, run stopping attributes versus their pass coverage. So uh, let's move on now and talk about two cards who we're going to focus a little bit more on their pass covering attributes and those are the uh, on the left side of your screen, you've got Derek Johnson, which is an elite card, by the way. This is the first, I think, elite that we've been able to put on our budget series. And this is only going for about 8,500 coins right now on most consoles. And we're going to be comparing him to another elite. This is Steven Tullock, team captain, 90 overall. And uh, guys, these are pretty close. I have to say, especially if you're looking in pass coverage, they are very, very close to one another. Uh, first thing, the Derek Johnson has a little bit better speed, actually. They're, they're the same, actually, in the technical speed attribute, but the acceleration boost that Derek got, Johnson gives you with two better is going to make him a little bit faster, so that's always nice to see. Uh, his play recognition is slightly lower at a 92 versus a 94, but he makes up for it with a 91 awareness versus an 88 awareness from Stephen Tullock. So... So far, these cards are very, very comparable, as you can see. But, I mean, Derek Johnson probably edges them out at this point. And then when you consider the fact that Derek Johnson has 67 catching versus Steven Tullock being only a 51 catching, that's a pretty significant difference. The man coverage for Derek Johnson and Steven Tullock are identical at 71. And then Steven Tullock finally comes out a little bit ahead with an 83 for the zone coverage versus Derek Johnson being just an 81. So, now, I will tell you the 81 for a lot linebacker is actually pretty good for zone coverage. Uh, that's not like it's going to make him not a good player in coverage. Steven Tullock is going to be a little bit better, but you're probably not going to notice it too, too much. I will say that. Um, now, some other things that I found a little bit interesting here. Uh, Derek Johnson has a very low strength attribute at a 71. That is like very, very low. So he is not great against the run. I, I will say that much. Uh, 71 strength. And then when you add in the fact that he only has a 78 for a block shed, that makes him pretty bad against the run. But as a pure pass coverage player, he is very, very good with the great awareness, great play rec, great speed, great acceleration, uh, and really good attributes in zone coverage and, mat and man coverage for a linebacker. So if you're looking for somebody who is going to do a good job in pass coverage, Derek Johnson is really your card. He is going to be able to do that very, very well. He's going to struggle a little bit, though, against the run. I will tell you that much. Um, the only attribute where he is really good 
good at in terms of stopping the run is he has a decent tackling at 92, and then his pursuit actually is very, very good at a 96. That's actually higher than Steven Tullock's. So uh, other than that, though, he is just too low, in my opinion, in hit power, block shedding, and strength to make him a quality overall linebacker. So he's kind of more situational. If you go up against somebody who passes a lot, you kind of want to maybe sub in Derek Johnson or put him in there on third down or make, maybe even make him your dime or your nickel middle linebacker or your quarter middle linebacker because he's going to do better in coverage than a lot of other guys do. So let's move on and we'll talk about now the third grouping of middle linebackers. Now this is the one that I call your user controlled middle linebackers. And, and what I'm talking about here is that these are kind of the guys that you want to control yourself. Now uh, the guy on the right, you don't necessarily need to control him yourself because he's an absolute beast either way. And that is, of course, the Luke Keekley 95 overall elite item. This is an absolute tank for a middle linebacker. He is really not weak anywhere, to be completely honest with you. Um, but if you compare him to Michael Kendricks, as far as pure attributes for user controlling, I think it's probably a little bit closer than you guys might think it is. So uh, what you see here on your screen, of course, is the Michael Kendricks, which is the road to the playoffs. He's 84 overall gold. And, you know, that really doesn't stand out that much, right? He's not particularly great overall at an 84, and he's only going for 4,500 coins, whereas Luke Keekley goes for around 100,000. So a huge difference here, more than 20 times the price for Luke Keekley over Michael Kendricks. But what I'm going to tell you guys is that if you user control your middle linebacker every play, like a lot of people do, you might be better off using Michael Kendricks than you are Luke Keekley. And I know that sounds absolutely preposterous, but let's take a look at the attributes that you really need to focus on when you're user controlling a middle linebacker. So as you can see on your screen now, guys, I did gray out the attributes that do not matter when you're user controlling a player. Now, the reason that they don't matter is because when you're user controlling, you're the one who, who controls the awareness, the play recognition, the band coverage, the zone coverage, and the pursuit. You do all of that. Now, all of those attributes come into play a lot when the computer is controlling them, but they absolutely do not matter when you're user controlling. So the attributes then that we look at for user controlling a player is speed, acceleration, strength, catching, tackling, hit power, power move, finesse move, and block shed. And again, power move and finesse move really only matter if you're blitzing. But what I will tell you is that Michael Kendrick has an awesome power move. He has an 89 for a power move. So if you do send him on a blitz, he is going to do some work. He really is going to do some work. Now, the unfortunate thing is that he only has a 78 strength, which isn't great. And his 78 block shed is actually pretty low as well. It's not as bad as uh, Derek Johnson was in those two attributes, but he is still going to struggle a little bit in those two things. So he isn't quite as good uh, against the run as he is in pass coverage. Uh, because he has 90 speed and 92 acceleration, he is typically going to be a player who's going to fly all over the field. He's faster than Luke Keekley by two, and he has two higher acceleration. 90 speed for a linebacker is something you just do not come across very often in this, in this game. So that is something that I looked at, and I was immediately like, yeah, this is a guy who you want to use or control. Because, like I said, he does have that big sp speed increase over the really anybody else that you would take a look at at middle linebacker. Now, like I said, his power move and his finesse move do make him good if you do decide to blitz with him. But he has great hit power at a 92. That's actually the same hit power as Luke Keekley, which kind of was surprising to me, I have to say. Now, he isn't quite as good as, as much as a pure tackler with that tackling attribute. But what I keep telling people is that there aren't a whole lot of times in this game where you get your hands on a guy and don't take him to the ground. It just doesn't seem to happen as much as like some of the other things do. Um, so for me, I don't care that much that he only has an 87 tackling because that's not a terrible attribute anyway. It's actually decent enough for a middle linebacker. You're not really going to look at that as being a bad attribute. It's just it looks bad compared to Luke Keekley at a 98. So uh, to me, like I said, Michael Kendricks, I think, has a case to be made that if you're user controlling with him, he might be better than Luke Keekley just because of all these different things. And uh, that to me is kind of interesting. So if you're somebody like me that utilizes your middle linebacker a lot, 
Go out there and try out Michael Kendricks because I think you might be pleasantly surprised by what you get from him um, versus what you, you would get for him uh, if he was actually being just controlled by the computer. So go out there and try him out. 4,500 coins. He's very, very cheap. And to me, he is probably one of my absolute favorite budget players in this entire game. He's really quite good at most everything. Even if you looked at things like man coverage and zone coverage, if you were not user controlling him, he's still not much different than Luke Keekley in those attributes. The thing that he's really lower in is awareness and play recognition. Those are the two main things. Uh, and catching as well. He, he has a 68 catching, which is actually decent enough, by the way. Um, but, it, but it is quite a bit lower than, than uh, Keekley. But those are really the two main things that I looked at as far as um, why he's significantly lower overall than Luke Keekley. But again, Again, if you're user controlling him, we don't even really worry about those attributes. They just don't matter. So anyways, guys, that is going to wrap up today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to hit the like button. And also, if you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe as well. That's how we grow this channel. It's how we get this information out to people. Uh, when you guys share the video, it really does mean a lot to me. So thank you in advance for doing that. Thank you in advance for liking the video. And also, if you guys would, leave a comment below. Let me know if you've tried out any of these players, if you like them, uh, if there's any, you know, other guys that you might recommend for other people that's always helpful as well or if you have any price updates on players as well I'd, I'd appreciate those as well all right so thank you guys again for tuning in hope you enjoyed the video and I will talk to you guys again soon